Open in your eyes. Well, on the record, in the Urick case, case number 537730, your appearances, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Mark Anderson, bar number 606, appearing for Attorney Kurt Smith on behalf of John Urick, who is present. Thank you. Your name, please. Maria Elena Urick. Thank you. You can be seated. This is the time set for a return hearing on the evaluation that Kathleen Bergquist conducted. It was a brief focus custody evaluation with a psychological evaluation of the defendant. I've received that report dated April 30th, and I know that Ms. Urich has been reviewing that. Have you reviewed it also? We have, Your Honor. Okay. We have a trial date coming up on May 9th, and Mom has raised some issues in her pretrial memo believe that's where I saw it, that she hasn't been given discovery and that she needs to conduct discovery. Have there been the proper 16.2 disclosures to her? Um, I don't know that either side has exchanged 16.2. I think uh, essentially we're looking at the parties testifying along with the, uh, um, the evaluation that's coming in, at least from our perspective. Um, We've not been served with any discovery request. You know, mm -hmm. not seen Mom's pretrial memo to specifically. I think that you filed that, correct, Ms. Yurik? Yes, I e filed it. So it's e filed five two, and I do have it in the file. I just have not had a chance to review it. Right. Um, she states that. She is at a disadvantage because she hasn't been given any 16.2 information. And, of Oops. course, the court has to hear everything regarding his business, the bank accounts. She uh, has never contacted us to indicate that that was an issue. But don't you have an affirmative obligation under 16.2 to provide that information to her? I believe both sides do, Your Honor, and to today that hasn't been exchanged. Okay. okay. All right. So, Ms. Bergquist um, made an evaluation, and from what I can see, um, the children do miss their mom. And it seems like there are some issues that are going on with uh, disputes over the amount of time that Jordan should be spending on, um, the word escapes me now, auditions and things like that. But that has been existing since I heard this case, so she's still being homeschooled? Yes. Okay. And the children indicate that they want to spend more time with their mom, so how can we accomplish this? That actually has allowed more time uh, since the last order. The problem is that uh, mom takes advantage of his kindness in many ways. I'll give you an opportunity. You can talk. For right? instance, uh, he did make arrangements for um, her to take Jordan down for an audition, or I think it was actually, there's two rehearsals scheduled plus a photo shoot, and they got canceled uh, before uh, Elena left with Jordan. Nevertheless, she took Jordan to Los Angeles, and she kept her for three days, uh, not keeping in contact with Dad. Uh, Dad has allowed uh, some overnights, but um, again, the problems that he raises are many as uh, identified in Ms. Burquist's report. Uh, uh, she will call and say she's sick and she children need to come home. She'll return one child but not the other child and those type of situations. So it, it's and John, I guess, could fill you a little bit more on 
what he's done and uh, the results of it, the court will allow him to do so. Well, her report, uh, Ms. Berkowitz's report said that mom is not a physical danger to the children. So while she has an unconventional lifestyle and may not be following exactly joint legal custodial provisions, this court has to put some safeguards in place where the children are safe which I don't think she's a threat of harm to them other than she's so, perhaps somewhat unstructured. So give me we have, some proposals for a solution. Well, we have situations where... I, when I say you can respond, you will, okay? But one person at a time talks. Ms. Berquist identifies in her report uh, another dance mom telling about Elena yelling at Jordan at uh, dance classes to the Here's point a. to the point where that another parent had to step in. Um, it's very clear that her focus is on Jordan to the exclusion of the boys, and that is evident not only in people that John identified for the court, but even though the people that she talked about and submitted to Ms. Burquist. Um, I think the recommendation made by Ms. Burquist is one that should be followed before we jump into any parameters um, of kind of deviating from the present order. And uh, she identifies the need for uh, Maria to have uh, three months of psychotherapy. She also identifies an increased visitation as the court deems appropriate to include overnights if Elena is able to provide a safe and appropriate housing for the children. Ms. Urich does not appear to be a present and imminent danger to the children and abruptly removing her from the kids' lives has been extremely disruptive and confusing to them. And I think if she gets psychotherapy and starts to show some stability, and again, we have questions of her housing, of her uh, ability to provide for the children, the work schedule. Uh, she's working all these odd jobs. Um, I think it's clear what everyone's concerns are, but I'm looking to you, Council, for a suggestion on a solution. It, and what are we going to do until the time of trial? And if you're asking me to adopt the recommendations for psychotherapy, I believe that's appropriate. I also believe it's appropriate to increase mom's time as long as the children are safe. So what is your proposal for a solution? I mean, Mr. Yarrick addressed that question because we just finished reviewing the report and I don't know that we specifically got into... I don't want you to go into a narrative. I'm not, I want, I'm you, not, I want I'm, you to give I'm me facts, a proposed solution. Fast. No, no. Proposed solution. Well, my proposed solution would be to continue as we have been. I have slowly given the kids more time with mom overnights. And where but are they when they're overnight with her? They're with her at the house she's living she at lives. presently, yes. Okay, and how many overnights have they had? Since the last trial date, I would say 10-ish, but they've been a couple days in a row, not just one overnight. I let her take, not let, but she, I guess I let her take the boys and, the, and my daughter to L.A. for three days to go to the beach. Um, everything seemed to be fine, but she wouldn't bring them home. I had to go get them late at night. Do you understand that there's a schedule? Because this is um, your goodwill towards her, and there's no court order that anyone has to, other than the last court order where she has a few hours on Sunday, I believe it was. That's what right. this is. So if you're allowing visitation beyond that, and there's no court order, you can't say to her, look, you're violating the court order. I never did. No, that's, what, I, that's I why I'm seeking that. a sure. solution. Because if there's, well, a court order, be if there's a court order, then you can say to her, you're violating the court order. So I'm asking you for your proposal for increased time so you can say, there's a court order. Let's, let's adhere to the court order. I think so what he's saying is that she's violating the agreement they had for more time. Yeah. That's not what I asked, though. Well, I, I know what I, the concerns are. I have trouble communicating I, with her to okay. say, when are you picking when them up? When do you think she should have them? whenever I think it works out well, because she puts herself ahead of everybody else, 
I mean, Johnny didn't was tired and didn't want to go, and then she makes Johnny, the youngest boy, feel bad that he doesn't go with her. It just happened to be he didn't feel good on that Sunday when she's seen him other days. She can see him whenever. I've never said no to her. She took him to a movie last night. I agreed to that. I'm slowly giving goodwill to the kids because I know they miss their mom, and I'm balancing the possible bad influence she has with her lifestyle and how that will affect the kids versus the, the love that she has for the kids and the vice versa. That's what I'm trying to do I know, as well. And so I, I'm trying to look out for their best interest, and they need their mom. They need to spend time with their mom on a consistent basis, and I'm trying to protect them as well. What she's asking you is, what would you propose? Leave it as it is and let me say yes when she asks to see them. And if one of them that's can't... That's not what I'm going to do. Okay, well, and that's they, what I've been trying to tell you. Right. And that's why I've been asking for your proposal. Well, I wouldn't want her to take them away from something they wanted to do because it's her time. I would never do that to the kid. If Jordan had a dance thing to go to, if the boys were playing football, I wouldn't come take them away from that because it's my day. She would. And if they don't go, she makes them feel guilty. Well, you don't love me. Why don't you want to see me? Instead of being... I think uh, what John is kind of expressing, what he's allowed uh, in excess of the court order, is gradual expanded time. So maybe one overnight a week would be a place to start. I've continuously asked for your proposal. Sunday night overnights. Are they all homeschooled? No, the two boys are in public school. She, I can pick them up in the morning. She complains about having to pick them up or bring them home. That it's not fair that she should have to drive. Okay. So I'm more than happy to so pick them up. you take them to school on Monday? I do now, yes. Okay. I take them to school. I pick them up. What time will you pick them up for school? I will pick them up at her house at 7 a.m. on Monday morning. <laughs> Is there a way she can be made to answer her the phone or text me back? No, so I'm aware of she work. got yeah. she knows Johnny has I'll text her, Johnny has a game at one today. Do you want to pick him up early and take him to his game or do you want to pick him up at two after the game and keep him later? No response. What days are his games? Well, he now, well, Sunday's about done, but he started playing. He got recruited to a Sunday league, but that's over. They have the playoffs starting next Sunday, so they should be done next Sunday. Both boys play on Saturdays. Luke also plays on Friday night, and then they have school during the week. Mm -hmm. I'm open to her seeing him at night, taking him to a movie, bringing him home. I can't count on her bringing him home early in the morning from her house because she's in Henderson and I'm way west. It's about a 30-minute drive. That's without traffic. But I'm willing to go pick them up. I'm willing to do anything so that they can see her more. I'm just... I mean, so when are they home on Saturday or Sunday? When are they finished with football? They have nothing on Sundays presently, so Sunday would work good. She could pick them up early Sunday morning. Keep them, I'll pick them up Monday morning, and we can try that for a little while. Okay. She still can say, hey, can I take the kids to a movie Wednesday night? I would always say yes. I think he would feel more comfortable about that type of expansion if she will cooperate and abide by, you know, whatever they agree to. You know, have the children ready for pickup when they agree to pick up, rather than doing things like taking off for three days in California with Jordan and not communicating with him. And she has called the police three times on not her day and wasted the police's time. And they just made her leave. Ma'am, you get the kids on Sunday. Why are you calling us on Wednesday? Why are you calling us on Saturday? That's not a lie. I can don't, don't argue with her. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Urich. Since the moment the child became, I've been having pages and pages of allegations against me. I can prove that they're false, have proved they're false. He's constantly lying. I, I, I'm so, I'm just like so upset because like it's, it's so hard listening to all these lies being told and not being able to defend against them. 
I love my kids so much, and I feel like still as of yet I haven't been able to tell my side of the story. Now, you gave me Sundays for visitation for them. I, I don't know if you realize, I live 25 minutes away. I have to pick up and drop off, you know, and I only get them for those six hours. I was the primary caretaker their whole life. You know, he he's a very, the reason why I want to leave the marriage is a big reason is he's very, very controlling. He wants to control everything. And, and he's telling total lies about me. Now, he's never, he's always been able to trust me with the kids. I've been their primary caretaker. I've had overnights, like as you said, 10 or more. I've taken Jordan to L.A. Um, at least twice now for, for, sorry, I got a little loud, I'm sorry, for like days at a time. You know, he's not changed anything with my daughter's career, ma'am. Nothing at all. She's doing everything she was doing, actually, and more than, than what I had. He's literally changed nothing. As a matter of fact, he plans on moving to L.A. and getting her passport and doing everything the way I had planned previously. Now, these people he has against me, it's a dance m mom that we had a bad uh, some, we had a bad argument happen between us, okay? And, um, of course, she's not going to have good things to say about me, you know, and his ex-wife who, who, ne who never knew me, you know? Um, the, all these things are just, when he, when he told me I could, what he was talking about when I went to L.A. and wouldn't return him, he, got, he was upset with me because um, my ex-friend Lisa, I want to bring her son home to hit her. We have huge problems. We almost got in a, in a dis fight because she served me with papers and like divorce papers and all these things happen and she accused, she, she said that she's going to sleep with my husband on all these things and so a, bit, a lot happened between me and her and he got upset I wouldn't bring her son home to, to her and that's when he took back his, his okay for me to bring the kid, bring Jordan to LA. He canceled everything. He canceled the photo shoot. He canceled her training. He canceled everything because I wouldn't do as he said. That's the reason why he canceled canceled everything and I took her anyway and he tried to call an amber alert, uh, amber alert on me and I told him that he could do that because I had his written permission. This is how it is. He, he likes to rescind his, his, uh, his um, permission, you know, and I, I, I'm still like, I'm still like totally bamboozled. Like I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone right now. He said he tried to get a hold of you for three days and, and you weren't, you weren't responsive to him? I'm never unresponsive to him. That's a, just a dead, it's just a total lie. I've never been unresponsible, uh, unresponsive ever at any point in time, ever. And um, it, it's just like really, really hard for me to hear all this and frustrating because it's just total lies that can be proven proven like just very easily with by me showing you some of the text messages and I, I'm a, it, it's just like the most important thing to me is that the, the kids are happy and they have their mom and dad and I've always asked for joint custody from the very beginning and like when it when it when I when it taught when referring to visitation and referring to like who they were, were with and not with the reason why that changed at all is because I wanted the kids to have what was best for them, and at the time, what was best for them, what was best for the boys was to be with their dad, because they had school, and I didn't want to interrupt their school, and that was the only reason why I had the separation of the children, because I couldn't afford to take care of all three of them, and that's what they wanted, and, I, and I've always wanted what was best for them, and I do not want them separated, and even when, um, even when it hurt me. I was trying to find a way to keep them together as well. Like even when I had them separately, I was trying to find a way to keep them at least one or two weekends a, a month together. You can see that, Your Honor. Um, I just feel like I'm living in the twilight zone. I feel like you. I feel like that my character has been totally misinterpreted, and I don't know how to undo anything. And I'm just so heartbroken right now. And I, I just can't believe this is happening. And it's continued. And it's continuing to happening. Obviously, Mr. Yurik has no problem with me having the children. I've had, like you said, 10 or more overnights, a trip to L.A. You know, obviously what he's been saying about me is, is false. It's very false. I've taken drug tests. I've done everything you've asked me to do. It's just, what, what else can I do, Your Honor, to show that I'm just, a, I know I'm a very emotional person, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, and I'm just, like, I don't know how to undo things, and I'm, Your Honor, I'm just very, very confused, you know, to why this is happening. I, I just want what's in the best interest of my children, which is their mommy and their dad, okay. and I've never wanted anything different. Okay, have a seat, Ms. Drake. Thank okay. you. You have done everything that I've asked you to do. And I appreciate that. Um, when you came in here, 
because of the way you were acting, I was had strong suspicions that you were on drugs. And then that followed, because you took a drug test and you were free of drugs, that followed um, with the psychological evaluation. Because you're so focused on Jordan's career and living with a tra living with her in a trailer in California and she was being homeschooled and you were kind of like those tiger moms, you know, that is really focusing on her career and pushing her that direction and I wanted you to focus on her education first. You and you had, no, listen education? to me, okay. listen to me. You had it backwards. You had it backwards. Her career was first and her education was second. Oh, Your Honor. And don't interrupt me. Okay. okay. You had it backwards. And that's why Dad has temporary custody of them. Can because I you were. About her education, no. Your Honor? No, because I'm talking. Okay. Okay. You don't need to argue with me. I just wanted to say something. I don't think you knew about her education. That's all. I'm well, sorry. I know she's being homeschooled, but that wasn't your priority. Your priority was getting her into auditions and getting her to performances. And I understand that she, she may be very talented and that's the direction that you want her to go. And dad, to some extent, is very supportive of that. But you weren't providing for her basic needs and that's why the children stayed in dad's home because he was stable. He had a stable job. He was getting them to school and now he's homeschooling her and he was allowing you time. So I knew that the children would be visiting with you but your life was unstable, you had no job, you had no place to live, you were living with a friend who was a vocal coach and you had too many instabilities in your life to provide a stable environment for your children. And now I have you're not supposed to interrupt me. Oh, I don't know when I'm allowed to talk. I'm sorry. I just wanted to respond. Well, I know, but you're so ready to respond that you're not listening. I'm listening. Okay, then don't talk and listen. This report says that you are emotional, that your emotions are um, out of control, that you don't have control of your emotions, that um, it's your way or the highway, that you, you know what narcissistic is? Okay. You know what histrionic is? Mm -hmm. Histrionic means that you over-dramatize things. You blow things way out of proportion that basically you're a drama queen, which is kind of what I'm seeing today. Okay? I just need you to be calm. I need you to be stable and reasonable. And I am going to follow the recommendations of Ms. Bergquist and order you to go through three months of weekly psychotherapy that's to focus on parenting skills. So that will be someone of your choice. I don't care who it is. You just need to let me know and let him know who you're going to see and have them do a report at the end of those three months that you have successfully completed that because you've done everything that I've asked you to so far. And the only reason I'm asking you to do these things is for your children, because I need to make sure that your children are safe. I'm increasing your time where you can pick up the children 9 a.m. on Sunday and keep them overnight. He will pick them up from school 7 a.m. on Monday, take the boys to school, and you also have Wednesday nights after school to take them to the movies or cook them dinner, whatever you want to do but you will pick up and drop off on Wednesday nights. I'm also continuing your trial because there's been no compliance with 16.2 and I'm ordering that to happen immediately. Council knows what that means. I would imagine that you need a copy of the rules. My staff upstairs can give you a copy of the rules, but you're at a disadvantage at this point because you don't have any information regarding your finances, regarding the business, and I can't have a full and complete divorce trial without all of that information being disclosed. Okay? Now, you wanted to talk some more, but do you have any responses to what I just said? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Okay, well stop crying and just be calm. Take okay. a deep breath. So. I've been a tutor for all of my life since middle school. It was my first job, and when Jordan had schooling with me, I had tutored her. 
and we, she was doing great. She was getting A's and B's and passing everything. Mm -hmm. So she's been with Mr. Yuri. She's been failing every single class, and he hasn't let me help her at all. Who's tutoring her? No one. Your Honor, she has she to has no she has to renew her permit to work down in California. We have a renewal of the application for March 17, and they do uh, check her academics as satisfactory. I submitted documents showing she has D's and F's in every class. You each submitted semester. documents to me? Yes. When did you submit documents well, to me? He wasn't letting me see, me see the children on my court. When did you submit documents I, to me that she's I making D's? I submitted a motion to enforce custody because he wasn't letting me see the kids on my Sundays. Okay, and and I had four police reports on the Sundays, no other day on Sundays. Because he wasn't there letting me have the kids on that day. He kept changing the day. He put Johnny into football on Sunday as well as Saturday. Be seated, please. Okay. I had a question, and I don't have an answer. Okay. Who is tutoring her? I tutor her. You as, do. Yes, and I've hired a tutor twice for English, but it's tough. I can't afford a, a tutor. I've asked Mom to help out. She's agreed, but both times it, she either wasn't available, didn't respond. That's a lot. Okay, so can she come to your house and tutor? Well, if she doesn't steal anything, last time she was at my house, I let her come into my house to take Jordan to L.A. on the three-day trip when it, everything was canceled, but they, she went anyways. She stole my lap, uh, my temporary hard drive. That's a lie. It's not a lie. Jeez. Don't, <laughs> she, don't respond to her. Just tell the court. She stole my hard drive out of my office and stored all, stole all my divorce files. When I asked her about it, she goes, it's mine. When I provided a receipt for it, she returned it five days later. On it was all my design files for my business, which I lost jobs because of that. Anyways, then, to keep going, she went to where I got the files done, to one of my clients, who's in the barter network, and told him that I stole her laptop. He ended up calling me which was embarrassing to everyone, and I told her I don't know what she's talking about, that well, How many hours a day is your daughter tutored? Not a lot. I mean, I do the best I can, probably an hour. I work with her on history and math. Um, I've had a... Is she home alone all day? Yes. No, I'm, I'm usually working. I go in the morning for maybe an hour to two hours. Occasionally I have to drive around to see clients or do a sign survey. But most of the time I'm at home working, and she's right next to me doing her school while I'm working. And I'll help her with a question while I'm working. Or So if you're home, can Mom come over and help tutor her? I would love that if I could leave her alone. But every time she's been in my house, she'll steal something. She stole my... God. She you stole, stole $2,000 leather coat for me. Hello. I've got it on video admitting to stealing it. She we'll stole my hard drive. We'll just note that everything is a lie according to you, and you don't have to keep saying it's a lie. Okay, I'll just note for the I've record. I'll just note for the record that everything he says, you're going to say it's a lie, so you don't have to keep saying it's a I lie. That he stole Did you hear what I just said? Okay. So I'm noting for the record that everything he's saying you think's a lie. All right, don't keep saying it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. I'm noting for the record that you're saying it's a lie. Okay. I'm trying to work something out where you can tutor your daughter and you're not helping yourself by you keep interrupting and you keep saying things like it's a lie when I'm trying to work out a plan where you can go help your daughter and tutor her. So do you see how you're counterproductive? Yes. What, yes, because yes, you're just Honor, sitting there going it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie? Yes, Your Honor, I do. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to object at any point. Well, what makes you think I believe all of this? I'm just trying to work out some solutions. I don't think you do, because I'm trying to help you. Okay, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Three times a week for her to come over and help tutor while you're home. That's at my discretion? That's not, or am I being ordered? Oh, I'm ordering important? three times a week. Okay, what if there's emotional issues, because when she helped Jordan with school, I'd be upstairs working, and they, she would be yelling at her. Is there a place you go? Is there a If I don't want her to is yell at my daughter. daughter's concern is... Is there is, a library? Is the there, first time you yell at her, you're done. I don't yell at her. He's lying. Yes, Judge, I understand. Yes, the judge, first time I, I yell at her, I that's it. Yes. You're done. Yes. 
Okay. Again, we have yelling at her noted in the report. Okay, so the first time she yells at her, instead of tutoring her, you're done. That's uh, easy to see. Okay. Oh, she won't leave. No, I'll I just said it. I know. I see how he has an excuse no matter what is said. I see that the two of you just back and forth and back uh -huh. and yeah, forth no and back what, and forth. He, he and, it, and there's never going to be a solution that an attorney or a court can come up with that's going to help you because it's going to be drama between the two of you. And there's no court order that is going to stop the drama. There's I nothing like I can do. Place. There's nothing counsel can do because it's like this with you two, back and forth and back and forth. It's like a tennis match. I just want to be with my kids and help my children. And you want to yell at them and you want to take them to I auditions and not tutor them. And, and you want to argue with me and you want to say everything's a lie. And he's critical of everything you do. And I'm sitting up here going, how, how do I help these parents and how do I help these children? I, I don't know how to help you. But I'm going to make some orders, and if you don't follow them, it's up Thank to you. you Your Honor. All right, I'm continuing the trial to give you time to do your discovery. Your trial date is going to be, um, if you're available, counsel June 13th at 1.30. I believe we can be available, Your Honor. 16.2 will be complied with immediately. Oh, I thought you said 1.30, sorry. I think the 8th, August 1 was 1.30. Okay, 9 a.m. Did you say June 13th? I think I have a doctor's appointment on that day. We did like three months for her. Okay, then you're going to have to wait longer for your trial, August 1st. Oh, okay, I'll, I guess I'll just cancel it. Sorry, I don't want to wait longer for my trial. June 13th at 1.30, you said? June 13th at 9 a.m. You're to start your psychotherapy immediately. If you don't have funds, you can contact Harmony Healthcare. I believe they do work on a sliding scale basis. What do yep. I say when I, like, what kind of uh, therapy am I supposed to request? Um, you can tell them that the court ordered you to go because there was a psychological evaluation in family court and you were assessed with narcissism being histrionic with manic tendencies. Did she provide them the report? With, no? Okay. Will there be... And it's to focus on parenting skills. Will there be some uh, means for her to provide proof of attending and reports to the court? Yeah, you need to file a letter that you've signed up for therapy with. I'm just, I'm just throwing Harmony Healthcare out there. I don't care who you go to. Can you also require the, the COPE classes that Nevada State says that we should take? Because um, I believe that he's alienating me from the children by saying he doesn't understand. He's harming the children by saying bad things about their mom and. I would like him well, the children did not report that he says bad things about you. The children were interviewed, and they didn't say that at all. Could we but be required to take the COPE class? Gee, I would love to talk without you interrupting me. So if you could stop, I will finish my orders. COPE class is mandatory for both of you. Wednesday night, you can pick up for movies or dinner. After school, you have to do the driving, pick up and drop off. Otherwise, you pick up Sunday morning at 9 a.m. If you're more than 30 minutes late, you will forfeit your time. You can't just leave Dad sitting there and take up his whole day if you're running hours late or you're just not showing up. So, Dad. Wait till 9.30 and you can go do whatever you had planned for the day, whatever you need to do. And then you'll pick them up uh, Monday at 7 a.m. at her home, take them to school. And three times a week, what days do you work? I've been uh, working whenever I schedule the days I've been house cleaning and um, tutoring. I've been house cleaning and tutoring and babysitting a five-month-old baby. Right, so those people rely on you. So when are you available? to go over and tutor. To tutor? Oh, Jordan? Um. Is 
should, you know, the thing that is making it so hard is that we live 25 minutes apart. So it's like a lot of driving for me too as well. I'm always the one picking up and going there, going back and forth, you know, and to, to like make it all work, it, it's like, it, it's difficult, you know, because so you want to go over there a couple well. of days a week and tutor. Um, maybe, maybe you can uh, go over on Wednesday. If you're going to pick up the boys or have dinner with them anyway, you could tutor on Wednesdays mm -hmm. for yeah. a couple of hours. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. And then you can always tutor with her during your time. So that's when the tutoring will take place, Mr. Yuri. Um, Wednesdays, she can come over a little early and tutor. Or I'd, I'd rather not be tutoring during the one day a week I have with the children. I would I would like to have some bonding time with them, you know? I think that's bonding as well. well You're I helping her. I have to see them once a week, Your Honor. I'd You've already to told me that it's too far for you to drive, and now well, I have I'm, you going over suggest, there twice a week, so something. you're going to have to drive twice a week. And then I'm not ordering either one of you to move closer to each other. You live where you live, so it's going to be twice a week under the schedule that I just gave you. And you have a new trial date. My marshal is going to give you a packet, so if you don't have an attorney by then, you'll be able to put your trial exhibits together. I suggest that you sign up through the self-help center downstairs for Ask a Lawyer. It's every Thursday okay, right here ready. in this courtroom, right outside those doors, Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock. You'll register for that program and you'll get some free legal advice through Ask a Lawyer. You might even meet a lawyer who may take the case on a reduced fee rate. Your that's Honor, a good place to meet you lawyers. Do that one time and I've done that already, Your Honor. Thank you for the suggestion, but I did that once already, and I think you only get one time to do that. I don't think so. It said that on the paperwork that I get it one time to do. To when do you have that. a trial coming up. And I also hey. try to get pro bono service through the legal aid network as well. I tried that as well. All right, June 13th at 9 a.m. Okay. Any questions about what you're supposed to be doing? What time do the children return on the Wednesday after school visit? Um, when do they go to bed? 10-ish, 9.30, 10. 8 o'clock. So they can get home, get ready for bed. You'll prepare the order, Council? I will. Um, so the trial date is vacated. And I think Mom filed some type of... Did you say 8 o'clock on Wednesdays? Was that 8 o'clock for Wednesday nights? Yeah. Yes. Bring them back. Because by. Because if they get out of school like around 3. But you can already be there tutoring Jordan, so you can actually spend a lot of time with them. And um, that will be in the court order that I could be at his residence tutoring Jordan, right? Does he change his as long name? as you don't yell at her. I don't yell. On Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Yes, on Wednesday, because it's too far for her to drive every day or three times a week. So you if can't. she's going to come over on Wednesday, the day she sees the boys anyway after school. So if she's tutoring Jordan, you might just want to pick up the boys from school, bring them home, and then she can. You don't even have to take them all the way to your house. You can go down the street. You can do something. Go to a park. Whatever you want to do. But you just have to have them back by 8 o'clock. She ordered not only not to yell, but not to take any property from the house. Uh, like, we've had that issue with the yeah. computer. Speaking about property. Well, you're, you eventually need to do a list of property. I have because a you, this is a marriage, and you both own property. Exactly. So you need to do an A-B list anyway. That might be part of your 16.2. She was structures. previously directed to do that, uh, Your Honor. And, and I didn't get to turn that in yet. How do I turn that in? Because um, I have a lot of personal property, including clothing and makeup, that he's not letting me have access to, and I, it has been a year now. Okay. All right. And if she wants to give us the list, uh, we, don't, we don't want to hold on to any... Does she have your email address? Um, I don't know if she does or not. I can give her a card. Okay. He'll give you a card, and if you have a list of things that you'd like to pick up, send that um, to counsel, and he will... Yeah. And, um, Your Honor, I also have a contract be between Mr. Yurik and I of him telling me that I can have everything in the house. Okay. So that's a trial issue. Okay. So you need to bring that contract and prepare that with your trial exhibits mm -hmm. according to those guidelines that we just gave you, okay? okay. Your Honor, 
Just one other thing. Apparently, she filed some type of fugitive motion. We never got served with it. We apparently she sent it to John. And I think it might have been reset for either the tenth or the ninth. That should be vacated, given the court's orders today and continuing of the trial. Fugitive document. Let me see. At the May 10th. I think if there's something filed March 10th. March 10th. We've never been served with it. And I don't know what you're talking about. On March 10th, you filed a motion. Who is allowing me to see the kids on my court appointed days? I had four police reports. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. It's not set for hearing, so it. It hasn't been served, Thomas, either. It hasn't been served. Okay. He was denying my court well, court obviously, I'm going to hear custody issues as part of the divorce case on June 13th. So I'm moving your trial date back about a month. And you don't have a lot of time to do the 16.2 disclosures and get ready for trial, so. So there's nothing that's going to be heard on May 9th or May 10th that we that's have to correct. worry about. Your Honor, I have a question. What if um, he continues to not allow me to see the children on my court appointed days? Um, I did submit four police reports showing that he was not letting me see them only when he wanted me to, not, not when you ordered me to see them. What happens in the future? Because it takes up a lot of time. It took up three to four hours each time I did it to call the police and like make these reports. So you can call me, Your Honor, oh, and, um, and I'll also work I with her if there's an issue. The, there the hasn't been prior right issues. Now, I have no, no, no parental um, authority over the children. If they're hospitalized or something happens, I have no say so over what happens to the kids. He left Johnny alone with a 102 degree fever and the police wouldn't even let me check on him. I also have no authority with Jordan with her acting or audition. He's, let, he's, made, he's made it so that I couldn't go to her audition and see her perform. Um, so I, I don't know if you realize that, but the way the court order stands right now, I have no legal authority to parent my children in, that, in those two capacities. That's incorrect. Well, the, I have a police report on video saying that because of the way the court order is written, I do not have the parental rights to check on my kids at all, for instance, when he left them alone sick while he was in L.A. But the police don't enforce the orders of the court, so you need to understand that every time you call the police, it's pretty much fruitless. Yeah, I, I mean, they can keep but, the um, peace, but you can't wave a court order in front of a policeman and say, you need to enforce this because they don't get involved. They're there to keep the peace. They're there to keep people from hurting each other. Um, they're not going to enforce your court orders. There had been more than two weeks at a time where I had not seen the kids. That's what your trial date is for. We're done for today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor.